without further ado, my very first song I ever wrote. Son of Europe, I learned it in my home. When the winds would stir up the spirits, would howl and whistle through the forest, and I'd sit disturbed, listening to their chorus. I got a deep feeling like I'd done something wrong, so it took me a while now to make up that song. But what a true story! I learned as I heard. song I wrote actually when I was on a junior year abroad down in Ecuador and um, uh, <laughs> I was really missing home uh, missing being back at the University of Wisconsin and spending my summers up in northern Wisconsin in the middle of the Shiguamigan National Forest where when I was a kid at 10 years old I remember my dad worked a lot but sometimes little moments could occur like it was 10 p.m., middle of the night, middle of the woods, middle of the forest, and he made me, <laughs> somehow got me to walk out into the middle of the forest, middle of the summer, middle of the night, and just sit quietly for 20 minutes. I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> I was terrified. Uh, every little sound was, was just absolutely... Uh, uh, heart-wrenching. You can't believe how uh, happy I was to finally get back to the cabin, but in the middle of the night, I woke up in the middle of the night hearing a howl, just like you heard in the song. And none of us, all, all, we just guessed that it was a dog or coyote or whatever, but uh, it was the telltale deep howl of a wolf who we didn't even know because we hadn't been keeping track that the wolves had started moving back into northern Wisconsin by that time I think it, well if I was 10 it was 19 
um, if I was turning 10 that summer, it would have been 1979. And uh, the wolves were starting to move in there. And ever since then, I've had kind of a love of, of wolves, studying them during the summers in college, living up there at the cabin. And, um, and then, of course, the rest is history that you can read about on the Wolf College website of uh, how this developed. But what really motivated, uh, motivated me to, uh, to um, go out into the wilderness and find what it was that I wanted to do with my life, I never thought I'd be able to you know, have enough skills to do this kind of work until I was retired. Matter of fact, um, I was going through a time where I really wanted to find that, those things out and I kept going out into the wilderness. And um, I <laughs> got Bernie here, Kim says. <laughs> Anyways, um, Kim wants me to put on a hat. That's okay. Not for this one. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Bernie here. Honor of Bernie. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm just going to mess it all up. That sound. By the way, if anybody wants to make any comments that may be watching that remember the old days, um, I'll try to notice if I can. And Kim might try to monitor as well. But. Um, so the next song I'm going to do was um, inspired by a friend of mine who I just found out passed away last August. I only kept in, I only kept in, she was one of our, my mentors that really helped encourage me to start uh, Wolf Camp and we only kept in touch in the last well, many years, 15 or even 20 years, once a year or so. She would travel around the world spreading uh, and it's uh, her message and inspiring people just like me all over the world to follow their dreams. And this song that she wrote um, really is important to me because there were so many magical things that happened in those early years around when I was starting Wolf Camp. And one of them was I was working at a Waldorf school in Bellingham and one of our students passed away. And um, around this time I learned the song. And it was tragic, of course. And then the weekend after, the Monday morning when uh, we came back to school, uh, you know, what can you say to the students? Um, and so one of the teachers, um, Mike, <laughs> he uh, told, just so, got everybody together in assembly, the normal Monday morning assembly, and told this story told the story of Jumping Mouse, which is written in the book Seven Arrows. Um, and I won't tell the whole story, but I'll just have you go to Seven Arrows or look it up online, Jumping Mouse. And it's a beautiful song, a beautiful story that talks about a mouse that goes on a long journey to find him or herself. And um, when that story was done being told, uh, there was a couple of teachers and myself that gathered in the office of the school, uh, specialty teachers in the homeroom teachers were, took the students to class and uh, the rest of us could barely function. And I look on the wall behind the administrator uh, and on the wall is a watercolor, a watercolor that is exact drawing exact artwork of what I imagined in that story Jumping Mouse where the eagle is soaring over the mountain and I thought wow how could there be a painting right there exactly of what I imagined and I look a little closer I look a little closer in the lower right hand corner the artist Devada the very student who had passed away that couple of days prior and many other amazing things happened during that time. Uh, one of them was me learning, uh, or that Leslie Slip sharing this song, Eagle Soars. And so this goes out to um, my friend Leslie, another friend of mine, uh, Eagle Spirit, who passed away three or four years ago. I want to check on that. And um, also uh, other friends that have passed on this Good Friday we remember you know those people and, uh, and think about them and then look forward to Sunday when we can look forward to a future and so this song is Eagle Soars by Leslie Lightfall
enough for campfire. Well, Leslie, I'm going to sing another song of hers after this, and um, this is a story um, uh, based on a legend that she wrote. Um, of course, back when we first heard it, we just assumed it was true, but of course now with this internet, you can fact check everything if you look hard enough to find out whether things are true or not. And it's probably based on a true story, but um, it's a legend from southern France. and. This legend is about a man who came back from World War I, or back from a war, back to his home, and there was nothing really left. He lived in a desert. He, the only thing he remembers is a desert, although his grandparents and grandparents, uh, great-grandparents remember it being a, a forest. A uh, century prior, it was a forest, and so he didn't know what to do with himself. All he did was, he was a sheep herder. And so he decided every morning he was going to plant 100 acorns and water them 
And then after lunch, while he's walking around with his sheep, look for little good spots that where little water might gather and put an acorn in there. And kept doing that for his whole life. And he did notice, you know, before he died, that there were a few uh, small oak trees starting to grow. But years later, well, I'll just let this be, uh, oh yeah. Years later, I'll let, uh, I'll let the, the song tell you the story of what happened. And this again is written by Leslie Lightfall. Kim's going to do a marshmallow. One by one with great effort He poked holes in the ground And he pushed the seeds down And he won all by hand In his mind he could see New green trees not there I think this needs a mushroom Or a mushroom A marshmallow yeah. Acre by acre Mile by mile In the desert Acorns one by one with great effort. He poked holes in the ground and he pushed the seeds down and he watered them all by hand. In his mind, he could see the new green trees not For he held a vision of a forest wild and free. Trees, not every land. In 
his mind he could see the forest wild and free Well, those of you who are, have the extra time on your hands right now, let's replace over the course of this weekend your know, worry with a vision of what it is we want to do personally in the future, that we want for the people we love and the communities in which we live in the world. Things could really change for the better if we work hard and participate not just in elections, but between elections. That, I've found, is really where it makes a difference. We really have to keep those who are in power accountable and stay accountable to ourselves as much as we can, as much as our health will allow. And so get outside and um, at least 20 minutes a day. It's not gonna be as beautiful weather that we have today and for this week all the time, but that's fine. It's sometimes good just to let yourself get rained on. That's what the skin is designed for, is to be wet. 